these jobs these days for real, for real. These days for real, for real. Hi guys. Okay, so today I want to do a deep dive book review. Um, and the book that I'm going to be doing today is A Little Life. So this is kind of crazy because I read A Little Life about three years ago, maybe almost four years ago right now. It's time was flying. Um, but I read it a long, long time ago. I think I was like 17 or 16 when I read that book. Um, but I think the reason why I'm itching to make this video is because I watch so much booktube content and someone new is always reading this book for the first time. You know, someone is always kind of making um, comments about the book, you know, if they liked it or not. And just how um, I feel like I haven't read a book like that before or ever since. So I think it's a very unique book and I really wanted to like discuss it further. So the first thing I want to say about this book is how I found out about it. So um, me personally, my book taste is um, like I have niches that I like to read. So for example, I do love reading hard hitting books, books that are sad, that are going to make me think critically, and that are going to, you know, leave me feeling something deeply. Um, I like crying. I know that's a weird thing to say, but I don't know, like, if you if you're a, if it's a book or a movie or a TV show and you can make me make me cry, thumbs up. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I was kind of on the hunt to find a book that was like that. And I stumbled upon a lot of different videos, like the saddest books I've ever read, or on book talk, just like, you know, sad books that are worth your time. And this book kept showing up over and over and over again. Um, and of course, seeing this over and over, I was like, okay, well, I have to trust that this book is going to actually be sad. You know, I saw so many videos of people, you know, claiming this was the saddest book they had ever read. And, you know, like I said, being in that mindset of loving sad books and wanting to read a sad book, I was like, this seems like the obvious choice. So I went out and I bought this on Amazon. It came, I was so excited to read it. I was very, um, nervous and just like nervous to read this because it's so chunky guys it's so chunky um looking at this it has 800 pages yeah like 810 um and i mean in my opinion the words are pretty small you know what i mean like you're they, the pages fill out you know what i'm saying <clears throat> so i was very nervous very interested and excited that's what i want to say um now the next part i do want to like let you guys know what all these tabs represent um so blue tabs i tab that whenever we learn something new about characters um and then the yellow tabs are like really good quotes and usually when it came to this book it wasn't just like a a sentence that i was like claiming was good it was like a page or like pages that were just genius writing um green are <laughs> usually when i annotate green always means good right like good things are happening happy things are happening as you can see there's only one green tab in this book and the funny thing about it when i looked back at it this moment that i highlighted isn't even like happy moment literally what the green tab is is um just having the title of the book in the book um and the sentence just says he would have turned down rose's invitation he would have kept living his little life he would have never known the difference and i just love whenever they incorporate that the title of the book into books or like movies or tv shows just seeing having a character say the words of the title is just so like cool and fun and so that's why i annotated that green um but like i said it's the only green thing i have in this book which is kind of sad also the last one red we all know red is bad <laughs> Right, it's all the sad things, the horrible things that happened. But to be honest, I probably could have put more red in here. I just, oof, if you've read this book, then you know what I'm saying. There's so much bad things that happened in this book that, you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, put red on every page. So I had to find like the, the, the most heinous ones. 
that I highlighted. Um, it's honestly kind of messed up. So this book, I'm pretty sure this book took me like eight months to read. Um, this is when I was just starting to get into reading. So I was not a fast reader three years ago. Um, I wasn't a person who like read consistently every single day. So like I said, it took me a long, long time to read this book. Um, and I also have like reading vlogs of this. So y'all can definitely go check those out. I'll put them up here. I think I have like three separate videos of me um, doing a reading vlog for this book. So um, I do want to say that personally, I felt like this book was really, really, really long. Um, didn't need to be this long, but of course I read it, but I mean, come on, 800 pages. I feel like most books who are, most books that are 800 pages or more don't need to be. I feel like anyone, I feel like anyone saying that has a valid reason to say that because come on, 800 pages? Some of that did not need to be in there, but I digress. Um, but I do want to focus on the positives right now that I have and that I find within this book. I have to say that, as you can see, I have quite a bit of yellow. So yellow is all of the amazing quotes, amazing pages, passages in this book. And there were so many times when I was reading it and I would come across such a amazingly written part where I had to stop and just reread that three times. Or there are moments when I would just um, take pictures of pages and I would send them to my friends and be like, read this. This writing is phenomenal. Or I would, you know, wait until my parents came home that night and I'd be like, mother, read this page. And it was just so beautiful. Some of the, you know, parts that were in this book were just, they were gorgeous. They were phenomenal. Um, a part of me wants to read this, but like all the passages I have highlighted are, are insanely long. Um... I'll read this one. This one's kind of short. <clears throat> this page 566. JB would ask them when Malcolm was anxious about something, but he knew he was worried because to be alive was to worry. Life was scary. It was unknowable. Even Malcolm's money would immunize him completely. Life would happen to him and he would have to try to answer it, just like the rest of them. They all, Malcolm with his houses, Willem with his girlfriends, JB with his paints, he with his razors, sought comfort. Something that was theirs alone. Something to hold off the terrifying largeness, the impossibility of the world, of the relentless of its minutes, its hours, its days. Ugh, all that was just, I think it's the whole page, but I'll just read that part, but it was just so good, guys. Like this, the author knows how to write. She does. I, I need to give her that. I do need to give her that. Um, the way she's able to encapsulate a feeling is pretty phenomenal. <laughs> um, I think my favorite one that I have highlighted here, it talks about, um, it talks about someone having, having a baby and like just their love for their child. That was breathtaking. So this one is on page 186. I have never been one of those people, I know you aren't either, who feels that the love one has for a child is somehow a superior love, one more meaningful, more significant, and grander than any other. I didn't feel that before Jacob, and I didn't feel that after, but it is a singular love, because it is a love whose foundation is not physical attraction or pleasure or intellect, but fear. You have never known fear until you have a child. And maybe that is what tricks us into thinking that it is that it is more magnificent because the fear itself is more magnificent. Every day, your first thought is not, I love him, but how is he? The world overnight rearranged itself into an obstacle course of terrors. I would hold him in my arms and wait to cross the street and think how absurd it was that my child, that any child, could expect to survive this life. It seemed as improbable as the survival of one of those late spring butterflies. You know, those little ones I sometimes saw wobbling through the air, always just millimeters away from smacking itself against a windshield. And let me tell you two other things I learned. 
The first is that it doesn't matter how old that child is, or when or how he became yours. Once you decide to think of someone as your child, something changes, and everything you have previously enjoyed about them, everything that you previously felt for them, is preceded first by that fear. It's not biological. It's something extra biological. Less a determination to ensure the survival of one's genetic code, and more a desire to prove oneself invaluable to the universe's feints and challenges, to triumph over the things that once destroy what's yours. And the second thing is, when your child dies, you feel everything you'd expect to feel, feelings so well documented by so many others that I won't even bother to list them here, except to say that everything that's written about mourning is all the same, and it's all the same for a reason. Because there is no real deviation from the text. Sometimes you feel more of one thing and less of another. And sometimes you feel them out of order. And sometimes you feel them for a longer time or a shorter time. But the sensations are always the same. But here's what no one says. When it's your child, a part of you, a very tiny, but nonetheless unignorable part of you, also feels relief. Because Finally, the moment you have been expecting, been dreading, been preparing yourself for since the day you became a parent has come. Ah, you tell yourself, it's arrived. Here it is. And after that, you have nothing to fear again. Oh, guys, when I read that, when I read that, it was, it was like haunting. It was like so creepy, but so well put together. Goodness, I love it. But I also, you know, we'll talk about that later. I love it, but like, ooh, you know what I'm saying? Um, we're at mercy. I also want to say that because a book, when a book is so long, one thing that is very helpful is having short chapters and that is not something that you get with this book. Um, the official chapters, this is all you get. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven. Okay, so there's only seven chapters in a 800 page book. Now, mind you, I'm sure y'all have read books like this, but a book, you know, has such long chapters, there'll be those little, those little dashes. That's a joke. <laughs> those dashes make me so anxious because I'm just like, but because I'll be like reading and it'll be along and I'll be like, okay, I'm ready to stop. But like, I'll get to the dash and I'm like, okay, I can stop here. Because my mind is like, oh, you can't Morgan. The chapter isn't done. And it's just like, I have to like contemplate what I'm going to do. Like, am I going to stop or I'm going to continue? But yeah, I hate those dashes to be honest with you. Um, now I want to talk about, hmm. I want to say that while I was reading this book, I was waiting for good news, happy news. I was waiting for our characters to feel, to feel joy, to feel happiness, to feel contentment. And that never occurred. It never came. And so as I was finishing this book, as I was reading the last chapter of this book and coming to the conclusion that no one got a happy ending, it broke my soul to know that here I was, you know, I spent eight months reading this book, 800 pages, getting so deep with these characters. I mean, 800 pages, you are going to know the character back and front, you know, left and right. You're going to know them so well. And like to get to the ending and for it to be so, so fucked up. I mean, it was just so bad that I remember reading the last page of the book and, and it was so creepy. I was sitting right here when I read the book. Yeah, I was sitting right here. Um, My back was, I was the other way but I was sitting here reading the book um 
And as soon as I closed that book, I was thinking to myself, wow, that was horrific. <laughs> like that was a horrific experience. Um, because no matter how amazing a book's writing is, after you read a book, as you're reading a book, um, you know, it's just, these are things you learn in English class. You know, I'm thinking to myself, what is the main idea? What is the plot? What is the takeaway? And after I finished that book, after I closed that book, I could not even fathom what the point of it was. Why did I read it? What was the point? Because when I think to my head, I love to cry. I love to read sad books. I love to watch sad movies. There's a there's a reason. And it's not because it's it's not because it's it's glorifying sadness. That's not why I love sad books and movies and TV shows. I love it because it's always hard hitting. There's always a point. I am always learning something. I am always taking something away from it. Something to learn, something to to feel. And there was nothing here. There was nothing in this book to learn. There was nothing in this book to walk away from other than, than emptiness. When I finished that book, I sat here. I sat here for 10 minutes and I was just lost. Like I was just like broken as a person. Like I was just sitting there like numb to everything that had happened in that book. I was just sitting there thinking, what did I read and why did I read it? You know, I was thinking back to, to when I had seen those videos of people recommending sad books. And I was thinking to myself, you know what? Yeah, this is the saddest book I've ever read. But for all the wrong reasons. <sighs> like I just sat here numb, feeling nothing but but nothing like I was just I was just crying completely silently feeling like I was a shell of a person and that is not what I want when I read a book that is not what I want when I consume media and that is not the kind of sad book that I would ever recommend anyone pick up unless you are okay you know what I don't I, don't, I you know what I don't think you would be okay feeling the way I felt so no, I would not recommend you read this book because I didn't get anything out of it, but feeling lost for a couple hours. I was just, just, I was just lost. I was like, really? That's all of our characters go through all that shit just for it to end shitty too. Really? And I have seen other people review this book and I have not done my own research on this author but I've heard people say that she had said that she wanted to write like the saddest book ever and she wanted it to be like what she wrote is what she wanted it to be like she wanted people to feel really really sad and if that's true I don't know if it's true I really can't you know I don't know, but if that is true, that's kind of fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. I still own this book. You know, it still sits on my bookshelf. I gave it five stars too. That's the crazy part about this review is I, I three years ago, I gave it five stars because I thought, because I, I knew deep down that the writing was superb. And I knew deep down that the way she wrote the story was impeccable. Not the fucking plot, because that was horrific. I'm just saying the writing, the way she was able to encapsulate a feeling, the way she was able to put pen to paper and make it make sense. That is what I gave it five stars. That is what I based my review on. But even though I did that, I still would never give this book to a friend. I would never give this book to my mother. I would never in a million years 
recommend this as a book to read because it didn't do anything positive for me. Yeah. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Alright guys, you let me know down below how you felt after reading this book and if you have read other books by this author and what you think of it. But yeah, now I'm back in the sad spot. I gotta go do something happy now. Okay, see you later. Bye.